We have to my far left, uh, head coach, coach Greg Troy, head coach of the Gator Swim Club. He has been on coaching staffs for the 96, 2008 and 2012 Olympic Games. Um, then I have Caleb Dressel, our 2016 Olympian, current world record holder in the 100 meter butterfly, an American record holder in the 50 and 100 meter butterfly. Ooh. And last but not least, Ryan Lochte tied for the second most Olympic medals by a U.S. swimmer. So he's looking for his fifth Olympic Games trip at this trials. And if he qualifies, he would become just the third U.S. swimmer to make five Olympic Games. So um, great lineup. What we will do, just housekeeping, if you could raise your hand, if you would like to ask a question, Patrick will bring over the mic. We do have folks listening online um, and through uh, streaming. And if I could, just given the masks, if you could please speak as loudly as possible and enunciate your questions, that would greatly help the panelists up here. So we will open it up to questions. Hi, Ryan. Nathan Fennell with the Nathan Fennell with the Los Angeles Times. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Thinking back good. to your uh, first Olympics experience, Oof. if you could, uh, <laughs> if you could give uh, Ryan Lochte from 2004 some advice, knowing what you know now, what would you tell him? You've obviously learned a lot of lessons over the years. Um, just to stay calm. I know in these types of meets, um, especially Olympic trials, there's a lot of hype on, um, and you can get discouraged and you can sometimes that can interrupt your swims. But I think if you just stay calm for me personally, uh, if I, the more calm I am and not reading into the crowd and all the other swimmers and just kind of stay in my own lane, I'll be better off. So just stay calm. And just enjoy it, um, especially for those young swimmers that this is their first swimming, like big uh, Olympic trials. Enjoy it and embrace everything that's going around you because this is probably one of the funnest swim meets in the world. Uh, Jocelyn Stamp, Sports Illustrated Kids. Ryan, what advice do you have for young athletes that maybe you wish you would have known sooner? Uh, um, I guess one of the biggest things um, that I'm still kind of get into like my brain and understand is health. Um, my eating habits, uh, I mean, I still get um, crap put on me from Troy and the other guys about how I eat. Um, it's just, if I p actually paid attention, um, when I was a younger kid, I think I'd be a better athlete, um, as I am now, uh, just because, you know, anything you do put in your body does have an effect on your overall performance and your attitude. Um, so once I started eating healthier, I mean, I'm not a saint, don't get me wrong. Uh, Start, once I started eating healthier, I started noticing my practices becoming better um, and my overall attitude. I was just a lot more happier. So I think that's what I would say to the younger kids. Hey, Caleb, um, Beth Harris, AP. Uh, does it feel weird to be in a trials without a Michael Phelps? Um, I don't know if I'm a seasoned enough veteran to be qualified to answer that question as much as some other people can. Um, but for me, I was actually, when we first walked on deck, I was talking to Ryan and 2012 was my first trials as a 15 year old. And I remember where I was sitting when I was watching him and Michael race. And it's just, it's funny how full circle things have come now to where now I, I have my picture on the, the big thing out front. It's just weird for me. Cause I felt, I still feel like that 15 year old sitting up in the nosebleed seats, um, you know, nine years ago. So it's crazy. Um, for me, I got to see Michael swim twice at trials. <laughs> Uh, 2012, 2016. So for me, it's not that weird, but I think for, you know, I think Michael's first trials was 2000. So for some people like Ryan, I mean, Ryan's had them since 2004. That was Ryan's first trial. So I think for some people more so than myself, it, it would be weird. And uh, just to follow up, um, you know, do you feel any burden in, in picking up that mantle that, you know, Michael has, uh, has left? I don't think that falls on my shoulders alone. Um, you know, Michael was one guy within USA Swimming, but he wasn't USA Swimming. You know, I think that's what makes USA Swimming so strong as the team and as a collective whole. Um, I say it every time. My favorite part about any team trip I've been on 
is the training camp because that's when Team USA really becomes Team USA. You know, we bond together and it really is a collective group. And I don't think that should fall on one person's shoulders. I don't think it was Michael alone and it's certainly not myself alone. Question for Caleb. I think you were barely out of diapers when Anthony um, tied for the gold medal in the 50 in 2000. So what is it like <laughs> for you to see him competing in the 50? Yeah, I was in, I was actually in diapers for a very long time. That's a separate, that's a separate story. Um, <laughs> I, what was the last part of the question? I'm sorry. I was thinking I was diapers. <laughs> Sorry to distract. It's okay. Um, what is it like for you to see him at 40 entered in the 50? I mean, I think it's great. I've always, I've always said this. I'm going to go on record. Um, Tony has one of the most beautiful strokes I've ever seen. I think if you ever got into the 200, that would have been his prime event. He's pretty good at the 50. So for me to say that is a very bold statement. I think he's got just a beautiful, beautiful stroke. Um, so I think it's exciting for the sport. That was the first swimmer. I think I really, attached to technically um, regarding uh, his technique, especially in the, the 50 when he swims 100. I just think he has a beautiful stroke. So for me as a high schooler, that was the first role model I think I had in the sport regarding stroke technique. So it's, it's awesome, I think, for the sport and for Tony to be doing it at the age he is and still competing. Hi, Maggie Hendricks from Valley Sports. This is for both Ryan and Caleb. I'm wondering if you had any doubts or concerns over the past 15 months that this day wouldn't come. Well, it still, it still hasn't yet. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. I don't want to speak for Ryan as well, but certainly, but Troy always had a, a plan. We followed that plan. I know he had a backup plan in case it didn't go through, but Troy always said, we're training as if trials are happening and we're going to train as if the games are happening. So if something does fall through, we're not going to be, you know, looking cluelessly with direction to go. So we always had a direction. That's all credit to coach Troy. I think me and Ryan are just good listeners. That's why we end up in the boat we are right now. So we got a, what, couple more days till it actually starts, three days, something like that. Um, so we'll see then, but I got a pretty confident that Charles is going to go through here. Yeah, I agree with Caleb. Uh, um, I mean, in the beginning of uh, the pandemic, um, there was some doubt. Um, I mean, I thought the Olympic trials were going to happen last year. Um, and then it got postponed. And then all, earlier in the fall, I was still thinking, of, I mean, there's always some doubt. Uh, nothing happened. Nothing ever happens the way you really want it to um, perfectly. Um, so, I mean, like Caleb said, we still have three more days. So hopefully everything is good. You guys want to hear something funny? Actually, the first thing that got canceled for me was a baseball game. I was supposed to throw out the first pitch. Um and that's when I was like, ah, like nothing's going to get canceled. And that was the very real, the first real thing I had to when uh, UF baseball canceled the game. And I was like, I was ready. I was throwing pitches in my backyard so I didn't embarrass myself or anything. And then once that happened, I was like, oh, this is a, this is a very real situation. And then sure enough, a lot of other events followed suit. And then a couple months later, weeks after that, uh, trials was canceled as well. So that was the first taste I got was a, a baseball game. Probably where I would have thrown my shoulder out. So it was probably all for the best. Everything happens for a yeah. reason. <laughs> Hi, Dave Shinen here from the Washington Post. Uh, looking back now over the 12 months since the, the postponement of, of this event from 2020 to now, wh what did that year do uh, for you or to you? Um, uh, you know, how do you regard that year now? Um, it, it wasn't exactly a lost year. You still swam. Mm -hmm. but, um, do you expect to, to, to swim this week? Um, as well as you would have in June of 2020. Um, I think I think I'm going to swim better than I did last. Than I was. I'm in a better state mentally and physically. Um, I'm a really firm believer that everything happens for a reason. Um, and maybe it was a sign of saying I wasn't ready last year. Um, but I'm ready this year. Uh, the training that our group we've done in the fall. Um, has been tremendous. Um, I mean, I get a swim with Caleb every day and we get to race each other and it's so much fun. And the other guys that we train with, we just have such a great group. Um, and I think we're all in a better spot than we were last year. So this is going to be exciting. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to sound like a broken record with Ryan said, but last year was really tough. I mean, there was points where I was throwing my hands in the air. I was button heads with this guy. He, he put me on my place 
very respectfully. He's got some uh, some wisdom on me, so he knows how to handle me. But there was points where I didn't know what I was swimming for. Meets were so far away. Um, but with what Ryan said, I didn't want to use that as a time to become lazy. I wanted to fix habits outside the pool. And then once I got back into normal routine, we're going to be in a better spot. So I'm a, I'm a true believer with what Ryan said, that I think we're in a better situation than we are this June than what we would have been in last year. It's been a unique situation for these guys, um, different ends of the spectrum. Uh, Ryan, um, we, we were pretty prepared for last year, I thought, for him. And, and another year added on. To, he's not quite to Anthony's 40 yet, but he's working on it pretty hard. So another <laughs> year of extending everything made that a little bit tougher for him, I believe. Um, Caleb handled it in a little different manner. He had so many different things on his plate. Got married this year. His wife was finishing up school. And we, we had some unique dynamics training-wise. We were traveling almost an hour for practice sometimes a little bit further. So we did a lot of time on the road and it gave us a little different perspective in the whole group of what we were doing training, what we were training for and allowed us to uh, spend some time working some weaknesses and readjust the way we looked at things. Hey there, this is Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal and I've got two questions. First is for you, Coach Troy, um, mainly just about how you tune up your summers when there's such a weird racing schedule like there is this year when you don't have all those data points like you might usually um, and then second for Ryan, you know, unlike a lot of the swimmers competing here, you've got some little ones that you're taking care of between doubles, just curious, <laughs> you know, how you've been balancing that. And, you know, are they here? Are they cheering you on? How are you doing that? Um, in Omaha, you'll know when Caden's here. <laughs> yeah. Everyone will know when my son is here. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, his, his son got in the paint the other day and we're riding out and he said, son got in the paint, there's paint all over the house. So he's, yeah. he's working on some different issues. But I don't have to clean it up. So I guess that's a plus. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the training issues were entirely different. Not having those points of reference of, of competitions, especially um, that, that March through November, December time period. Um, we had to do some things a little different in training. Um, try to get some different evaluation points, stuff to look at. Um, Actually, I think it helped me a little bit coaching wise because we presented some, some some different things, different avenues of looking at it. Um, the, the, the training was almost all long course. We were unique compared to some other people. We had some long course water. We hadn't done that much long course before. So we were a little concerned about some speed issues and stuff we had to work at. And uh, when we did take the meets, we, we took them each of them just a little bit more uh, seriously looking for certain things and then tried to come out of those meets with what, what can we improve upon? Where are we a little bit weak? Fortunately, it's, uh, it's not a real large group. There were 12, but over the summer, we had picked up a few other people that were looking for water time. And the Malad practice has become a little more competitive since there were some outsiders or different people with us. I think that gave us a, a little heads up. And then when we did swim the meets, um, each of them was a little bit heightened, but we are a little tentative. I think we, we raced very tentative for a while. So I, I think that those adjustments were good. And, and again, both had wives, so in family situations and you know, I've, I've never had to let a guy out of practice because he's going, going to an ultrasound or uh, someone leaving because they had a wedding rehearsal with a little, little different things. I never missed a practice for my wedding. He thinks I did, but I didn't. <laughs> I swam I swam the morning of my wedding. <laughs> that wasn't my choice. He had the time off. He chose to do it himself. Um, oh, and uh, your question. Um, you know, it's been very – that's the one of the things that I'm still trying to grasp – get my hold on is balancing being swimming at the top level in the sport of swimming and being able to go home and not have the luxury um as other guys might where they can go home they can take naps um they can go get massages um i have to go home and i have to become i guess you can say super dead um, and when I come home, I'm the play dad. So all my kids, they're like, daddy's home, let's play. And I'm like, just got my butt kicked from practice. And I'm like, kids, like, I just want to be left alone and I can't, but it's, it's all worth it. Um, because my kid, my family is everything. Um, I used to think when I was younger that, I mean, swimming was my life. Um, but now swimming is just a cherry on top. Uh, me being a dad and a husband is what I feel like I, I was put on this earth for because it's a blessing every time I wake up and see those kids. Even when my kid, like Troy said, throws paint and starts painting the walls, the house, um, 
it's it's amazing. It's just it's a new chapter in my life, and I'm so happy about it. But it's been very difficult balancing the two. Um, but they will be here. They come in Sunday, and they got special lofty jackets made. So it's gonna be cute. Um, and don't worry, you guys will notice when my kids are here. <laughs> They're loud. <laughs> My baby said his three-year-old once in a while at practice when they all spills, and it keeps it pretty busy on the deck. So, was... Yeah, he yelled at my son one time. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> hey, Brian, it's Christine Brennan with USA Today. Yeah. Two questions for you. How do you define success here? Is it making the Olympic team, or is it something else? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, for me... For me personally, I feel like success would be making the Olympic team and not just making the Olympic team, but going to Tokyo and getting another medal. Um, to me, that would be success. Um, but also, I have to, there's two sides to that because another part is me just, you know, being 36 and just everything that I've dealt with throughout my entire life um, and the training and everything um, and just being here. Um, and giving it one more shot, um, I feel like is success too. And outside of the pool, I am successful. I mean, I got great sponsors. Um, I have a family now, which is the best thing ever. Um, so to me, I'm winning. Um, like I said, um, swimming is just a cherry on top. And to follow up also, uh, when you look back, if you look back on Rio in 2016, mm -hmm. uh, in the pool and then out, I'm curious, when you look back, what do you think of uh, what lessons might have been learned? How do you look at what happened in Rio now? Thank you. Um, you know, Rio, I try not to dwell on the past. Um, and I think that's what, one of the reasons why I'm here, standing in front of you guys, um, because no matter in life, how many times you get knocked down, it's how you get up that defines you as a person. And I mean, I've been knocked down and, but I'm a fighter and I got up and I kept moving forward on setting new goals in my life in the pool and out of the pool. So, I mean, 16 happened and I can't regret those things that happened because it helped shape me who I am today. And I am the happiest person I've ever been my entire life and I'm doing what I love to do. Um, and these guys help me every day. Like they help make swimming fun again. Um, so, and like I said earlier, everything happens for a reason. It was, a uh, it needed to happen because everything that was happening in my life, uh, uh, it was just uh, going down a dark hole and it was someone saying you need to wake up and smell the coffee. There's more to life than just being a rock star, um, having that rock star persona. So, I mean, I had a wake up call and now I'm the happiest person ever. Caleb, uh, Joe Nugent from WOWT TV here in Omaha. I'm curious, have you heard about the car that's over in the Aqua Lounge that is painted much like your, your tattoo? Have you heard about it? I have. I had a, a coach <laughs> in Wave 1 send me a picture. I had no idea they were doing that. Uh, the artist did a really good job. I saw that she, she made her own post uh, on Instagram, and it was really, really cool. I'm not sure how many hours it took her, but she did a really, really good job. I mean, I thought she captured it beautifully. Um, so you know, big shout out to Toyota. And I, I'm not sure of the artist's name who did it, um, but she absolutely killed it. But I haven't seen it in person now. So maybe I'll wander over there tonight and check it out. I want to see it. Yeah. We're being drive it. <laughs> Another question for Caleb. It seemed like in the lead up to the trials last year, the question was how many gold medals can Caleb win? The question leading up to this trials is, are these Olympics going to happen? So I'm wondering if this um, last year has changed, how, if at all, it's changed your perspective of these Olympics, what you want to achieve at the Olympics, and just the grandeur, what they mean to you. Has any of that changed during this? Uh, I don't think so for me personally. 
as I mentioned earlier, you know, my mentality right now, the mindset I have, the mindset within the group and the training plan that Coach Troy has put forward has been trials is happening and the games are going to follow suit after trials if you make the team. So that's the plan in my head. That's what we're sticking to as of right now. If anything changes, we'll adjust beautifully and move on with that. I guess I meant more your perspective. Like, do the Olympics seem less important in the grand scheme of things to you than they did? Or do you feel less pressure now than you did a year ago in in that respect? How, if at all, are they? The only thing that's changed for me is instead of 2020 games, it's 2021. Uh, And even so, the logo is saying the same that I heard. So really not much has changed. Um, If you want to add a number one behind it, so be it. But for me personally, no perspective hasn't changed. Same focus, day in and day out, looking for ways to get better. And, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna stick to that. Coach, um, the CEO at the last news conference, they asked him, what is the worst case scenario you're thinking about when you get to Tokyo? From the coach's standpoint, what is that? Jeez. I try not to deal in worst case scenarios too much in that situation. Um, We'd like to have the opportunity to compete. We put, we put in a lot of work. Hopefully we, we do well enough here that we earn a spot on the team. And uh, it would be a shame if uh, the opportunity to see all that work pay off was deprived at the, at the last minute, regardless of what the reason is. But it's, it's a pretty big world. There's lots of things going on. Um, there, there's certain things more important than just swimming. And um, the, so we have to keep that perspective. So I think what, what he said is right. Our, our goals are still the same as what they were before. We work towards those goals. Hopefully we get the opportunity. And, and the worst case scenario is if there's no swim meet, we'll uh, readjust and get ready for 2022. Ryan, it's, a, it's been a good year for athletes that are allegedly outside of their prime. Tom Brady, Phil Mickelson. Do you get any motivation like from it. those guys? It. Yeah, are you, are you feeling that vibe a little bit? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, and, you know, the one person that does help me uh, a lot with this is Troy. Um, he, he gives me those stories of Nicholson and, like, Tiger um, and Tom Brady. So, I mean, there is hope. <laughs> um, you know, I just stuck to the plan. I stuck to Troy's plan. Um, training has been amazing this this year. Um, I'm training with the great, the fastest swimmer ever. Um, and we push each other every day in practice, and it's fun. Uh, so, yes, there is hope. <laughs> Troy also gives them the most crap for being old, so it's a double-edged sword <laughs> yeah. there. The average age of our group went up a lot when he came back. (laughs) (laughs) Anna Bellinghausen with UNO TV. This is for Ryan and Caleb. We saw wave one the first time that's ever happened in Omaha. What do you think it meant to those young swimmers to get to swim at such a stage like Omaha? I mean, we yesterday we came in and we were talking to Brendan Hansen and he was so brennan his face was just smiling from ear to ear he was like this was the coolest thing ever the kids it was their first olympic trials they were like they were up on the they saw their names on the jumbotron and they were like oh my gosh look they were just like little kids at a candy shop to me that's awesome that's everything and that made me start realizing you know that's what i have to go into that's what we have to go into this olympic trials is like we're little kids again um, we're because this is a new experience. Um, even though this is my fifth Olympic trials, this is going to be a new one. Um, and it was just, it brought me back a couple notches and being like, yes, like this is what it's all about. Um, just seeing Brendan smile from ear to ear and like the joy of those younger kids, like having so much fun. Um, it definitely helped out a lot. Yeah, I think my initial fear, I, I had a problem with the whole wave situation because I related to being that 
young kid in 2012 where I got to swim in the same pool as Ryan. I got to swim in the same warm-up lane as Michael. I got to watch them compete at finals, and I felt like that was taken away from wave one, or so I thought, until after talking to Brennan and seeing the photos of the kids having their moment in the same pool at the same venue, but instead of seeing my stupid name on the scoreboard, they got to see their name up there. So it completely flipped on me of a worry that I thought was something that was being taken away from them was actually given to them where it wasn't shadowed um, by, you know, some of the big names here at the wave two. Um, so I was really happy for the kids and you could just see genuine excitement where it looked the same emotion that some of the big names in wave two that you're going to see. Um, so nothing was taken away from them. I'm really glad it worked out like that. And it was just genuine excitement where they were in the same pool. They were at the same venue while we might not have been there at the same time to them, it was real. And it makes me really happy to see that. So they can carry that moving forward four years from now to where there will be someone from wave one who's going to be on the team four years from now. So it makes me happy that they have that experience now and that wisdom moving forward. Megan. We can hear you. Okay, Megan Soyson from NBC. I have a question for Coach Troy. Um, since Ryan came back to swim with you a few years ago um, until now, what sort of changes have you seen from him in the pool and in training? I get tired a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> he does get tired a lot easier. Um, the training's been similar. Uh, our workload isn't quite the same as it might have been in the mid 20s and the early 20s, but it, but it's been uh, been real close. We, we've made some compensations to um, to to things outside life. Um, it, it's real hard to um, there's there's all kinds of stresses on these guys and and controlling the stress. I I can control the one at the pool, but I can't control the outside, and, and the stress creates fatigue. So we've, we've made some adjustments relative to um, maybe child sick. He's been up all night with the kids. He comes in, he's not nearly as, as fresh as what he would have been before. Uh, his recovery time, uh, what I've seen physically recovery time hasn't been too bad, but the mental recovery of, of dealing with those stresses and just being fatigued, um, normal everyday stuff. Uh, you know, I, I'll, get a, I'll get a call from him once in a while. He's going to be late for practice because something happened at home. But he's been really good about that. I, I think the training direction has been a little different because we're we're not going to swim quite as full program as what we would have in the past, and uh, just the general attitude. There's a little more maturity. Uh, he's he's gone through some um, even since he's been back in town. Safe for say, Ryan hasn't always made all the best choices, but he's learned from those choices. I think what he told you earlier, he's uh, he's much more mature in what he's done. That's given me an ability to, to to talk with him even more. We always had a good relationship of exchanging ideas. The information I get back from these guys, they're really great athletes, and so the information you get back allows you as a coach to you know, got a sense of honesty and very trustworthy of what direction we're going. And I, I think that's even greater now from from Ryan's part. I have to ask just because it's a weird year, but are all of you vaccinated? And if not, what are your, can you walk us through your thoughts there? Um, I'll go first. Uh, I, that's a personal question. So I'm just, I'm not going to answer that. I will. I am. I, I've been, I, I get vaccinate, vaccinated early. I got a little age factor on these guys, some health situations. So I, I was, um, I was pretty cautious on all of it. Gr groups are very cautious. We, we've been extremely fortunate staying on top of things. They've been uh, very religious about masks. And, and we, we trained at a variety of different places. So we deal with a lot of different issues. So, so we, uh, we stress the vaccination and getting it done. I am. I'm Team Moderna. <laughs> Always a businessman. He's looking for some way to get a kick in. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, we get Christine. I guess to both uh, Ryan and Caleb, as we've discussed, you know, Michael Phelps, you mentioned him. Um, he's, of course, not competing here. And it's the first time since 1996 that Michael is not at the trials. What did Michael Phelps mean to your sport? If both of you could answer that. Do um, you want to go? Yeah, I feel like you're going to have a way better answer than I am. I mean, 
he was the guy growing up. I mean, I, I remember Beijing was the first Olympics I remember watching. So, I mean, kind of sucked. It was like having the best movie out of a, a sequel or a, pre, a prequel starting off with Beijing. But it was awesome, really inspiring watching that. As I said, I, I never I never really had too many role models just within the sport itself. But, of course, Michael was the guy to watch. I mentioned Tony, but that was more technique, stuff like that. Um, so, for me, to have my one moment with him in Rio to swim on a relay with him, it was it was awesome. I wish I had a little bit more time, but I still text him every now and then, get advice. Uh, I know his, I know his phone's always open. I know his ears are always open. Anything I have to rant about, complain about. I came out swinging. It was like in the middle of quarantine. I was frustrated with a lot of stuff. I sent him this long text. He's, I think he was just like, what the heck? Um, but he, he helped me with some of the stuff. He's like, if you ever just need to call. So it's been great to kind of have, have that support from him, from someone who I don't even know that well but he knows how the sport works and I feel like he's willing to give me any, any advice he has. So that's where I'm at with Michael. Um, he's, he's a good guy in my eyes. He's always willing to offer me advice. Always willing to lend a hand. I just wish I had a little bit more time with him, a little bit more time to compete with him. Um, I'm going to definitely miss my spade partner. Um, man felt me and him. Uh, it's a love hate thing, uh, with me and him just when he was, um, swimming just because we swam basically the same events almost. Um, but after he stopped swimming after 16, I talk to him now more than I've ever d have in the past. Um, just with, cause he's been through it all, um, through the media, uh, through the kids, through training, everything. So I, I actually, I probably text him or talk to him probably like once every like three weeks. Um, and he's like, he did with Caleb. He helps me out a lot. Um, you know, as I got older, uh, things started, I was mentally frustrated uh, and he was helping me very much with that. Um, but fellas with swimming, I mean, he, he changed the sport. He made the sport bigger than what it was. Um, and I remember one of our first times uh, me and him were hanging out and we were talking. We we're like, like, what is what is one of the things that we want to do in the sport? And we, we both said we want to make swimming bigger than what it is. We want to put swimming in everyone's living room. Like you when you turn on the TV, you see NBA. Uh, why can't we have that for swimming? We want to make swimming bigger. And, you know, Phelps definitely he did that. Um, and I'm trying to do my part. Uh, Caleb is doing his part. Um, so, and there's a, a lot of young swimmers out there that will be the next Michael Phelps. Um, I mean, we have one right here, right next to me. So, um, I mean, definitely going to miss him. One of the hardest competitors, um, ever. Um, but Seeing him go, I think I'm get I get so like like with him is because I see a lot of traits from Phelps that I do see in Caleb. Um, he never backs down this kid, and uh, it's amazing to see what he does in the pool. Um, and he's so he's smart, um, and that's what Phelps was. He was very smart of, about like strokes about anything. And that's what K I see in Caleb. And so I feel like the torch is getting passed on over. And it's just a, it's just amazing to be in the same era as Michael Phelps and now with Caleb. So it's pretty amazing um, to just watch how swimming has grown. Great. And we'll have our final question just right here. Oh, Patrick. <clears throat> uh, Caleb. Um... Ryan spoke about uh, putting swimming more on the map, and obviously you're already a big name, but is part of the preparation also preparing for how the Olympics might, you know, take you to a whole nother status? Um, that's not something I've really thought about or something I'm really too worried about. That's never been my goal in the sport is to, you know, aim for a bigger spotlight. You know, if it were up to me, I just want to swim. I want to swim fast. I want to learn from the sport. I want to keep chasing those challenges that the sport offers day in and day out. You know, this sport has taught me a lot about myself, you know, valleys and the mountaintops. I've been appreciative of every opportunity, every obstacle this sport has thrown my way because 
the sport gives me so many opportunities to make me a better person. Whether you take them or not, it's, it's up to the individual. Um, that's why I love this sport. It'll, I know it'll never stop giving me obstacles and giving me challenges. So I'm not worried about the spotlight. I don't very much care for the spotlight. That's not why I'm doing it. Um, so it's not something I've thought about too much. If I let it change my life, if I don't let it change my life, it's really up to me. I'd rather go with the latter option of it not changing my life. I'm very happy with where I'm at right now. I'm happy with the people I'm around. I'm happy with, I'm happy with my circle, happy with a lot of things. So I don't really, there's nothing I'd really change. There's nothing I really need right now at this point in my life. I'm happy with what I'm doing. The next thing I need is the next obstacle, the next challenge. I'll be happy with that. Great. Thank you all for joining us. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Are we, we're back in 10? Are we done? No, we're done. Oh, we're done. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you.